Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Ooh, cry out. I'm so glad, so glad, so glad he did. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. We praise you this good Friday. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The fifth word today, John 19, 28. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. It takes a lot for a person to ask for help, especially the helpers. Those who are constantly doing for others will be the first to tell you that it is perfectly fine to ask for help, but they themselves will run themselves ragged to avoid asking for help. You know the ones that'll buy new clothes because they don't have time to do laundry and ain't gonna ask nobody for no help. The ones who, who have that one space in their house where everything kind of is a vacuum. It gets piled up in there because we don't really have time to deal with it, but we ain't gonna really ask nobody for no help. The ones who will pay twice as much for something as something really costs just to avoid asking the guy that we know who knows how to do it, who will do it for a little bit of something, but we ain't gonna ask him for no help. All because we have just a hard time asking for help. Me, I'm the ones. I do that. <laughs> this thing happens. This thing happens that tells us that we, the helpers, if we need help, then somehow our own helping isn't authentic. Sometimes we will have a person in our ear, past or present, real or imagined, that tells us if we can't take care of our own home, we shouldn't be trying to help anyone else. If we can't take care of our own business, we shouldn't be trying to help anyone else. If we can't make our own marriage work, we shouldn't be trying to help somebody else. If we can't get our own bodies together, we shouldn't be trying to help anyone else. But there are these dichotomies that exist within us that are hard to reconcile. Like we can be analytical and creative. We can be great and a mess. We can be endearing and really annoying. We can be smart and silly. We can be dedicated and ambivalent and empath and cut you completely off. We can have needs and meet needs. Sometimes we sabotage our own success and sacrifice our own sanity because we listen to those negative voices in our heads that tell us we cannot be human and holy. That we can't have human weakness and holy strength, that we can't have human timidity and holy boldness, that we can't have apathy and faith, and we can't have depression and holy hope, we can't have sadness and joy, that somehow we can't have, have passion and peace. That while being human and holy might be difficult concept to embrace, especially when we're trying to make peace with our own struggles. The concept of a dual nature isn't something totally unfamiliar or unacceptable to us. We all know for a fact that Clark Kent was Superman. We know for a fact that Bruce Banner was Incredible Hulk. We know for sure that Diana Prince was Wonder Woman. Peter Parker was Super Spider-Man. Bruce Wayne was Batman. And y'all know that the shoe shine boy was underdog. We love celebrating the dual natures of these superheroes, yet reject the possibility that a dual nature lies within ourselves or others. But this notion of being monolithic people, people who are all the same or only one way, one character, one nature, it's not really a thing. I mean, it's a thing for people who are uncomfortable with the reality of duality, but those are the people who are generally uncomfortable with our higher selves. You see, they feel bigger when, our, when we're small. They feel stronger in our weakness. They feel smarter in our ignorance. They feel holier in our sinfulness. So they have an invested interest in containing us to oneness. When we start to demonstrate our greatness, they will be quick to highlight our slothfulness. Dual natures natural and supernatural, regular folks and superheroes. This isn't a real new phenomena. Philosophers have long debated the terms for and descriptions of origins of legitimacy of manifest, manifestations of the dual nature within humans. 
And some of this conversation was happening during Jesus' time. Gnosticism included the belief that there was indeed a dual nature at work within humanity, but it was their belief that the spirit person, that higher self, our good self, came from a higher God, and that that God was good, but this flesh and body and all this created stuff came from a lower God, and, and that our bodies trapped our spirits, and the only way to get out of this life and to get release our spirit was to die. So they believed Jesus. They believed that Jesus was from the higher God, but they believed that his spirit was trapped in the evilness of his flesh uh, that was created by the lower God. The Gnostics rejected the notion that being fully God and fully human could both be manifestations of the fullness of the highest God. So Jesus tried to teach him. John was intentional in his gospel to record the declarations. Uh, John's gospel is the only one to record the seven I am statements of Jesus. I am uh, statements that were a direct connection to Yahweh, that, that, that the, to the God who declared to Moses, I am that I am. And, and Jesus reinforced this in John 10 30 when he let them know I and the father are one. I am human and holy. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door, the true vine, the good shepherd who lays down his life for his friends. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life Jesus tried to teach them. So now here he is on the cross, and he declared once again, I am thirsty. I am human and holy. I believe that this declaration was more than Jesus telling us that he had human needs, more than connecting a Jesus to a human suffering. I mean, really, if this was just about human suffering, Jesus could have said almost anything. He refused the mixture of wine and gall, the potion that would have caused his body to be numb and hastened his death. He refused relief. So with thorns bashed into his head, he could have said, I have a headache. With metal stakes driven into his hands, he could have said, I'm hurting. With his mangled flesh oozing blood, he could have said, I am weak. But no, he declared, I am thirsty. It makes sense for him to have been thirsty. He had to have been dehydrated. He hadn't had anything in his body since supper the night before. And in addition to the physical trauma he was going through, he had been baking in the Middle Eastern sun during the hottest time of the day. His mouth had to be dry, but I have to be honest. And I asked the question, what does it matter? I mean, dude, you're on your way out of here, right? Why you gotta have something to drink now? You went all this time. You just got a few minutes left. Why you need something to drink at this point? Now, while this ordeal is wrapping up, it took nearly everything he had left in him to push himself up from the cross. I'm thirsty. No doubt his vocal cords were weakened. While it seems reasonable that he was thirsty on one hand, it doesn't make sense on another hand. You see, one of the things that happens when a person is dying is that their organs begin to shut down and the digestive system is the first to go in the body because the body doesn't need it anymore. And along with the digestive system, the senses that trigger the system's function, smell, taste, and thirst all go and this is when it dawned on me things were wrapping up but jesus was not quite through yet he had some more work to do he had a couple things left to declare i suggest to you that maybe jesus was not proclaiming his suffering and his desperation at all but maybe jesus was declaring just one more time his i amness one more time for the people in the back who ain't quite got it yet i am holy and human at the same time i am I am hurting, I am healing. At the same time, I'm in need, I am meeting needs. At the same time, I'm in submission, I am in control. I am human and holy. I am lifted up and I am drawing. I am weak, but I am strong. I am in the valley right now, but I am in God's presence. I am in the belly, but I'm being kept. I'm in the battle, but I'm victorious. I am in the darkness, but I am the light. You thought I was just a car carpenter's son. Oh, you thought I was just a carpenter, but I'm a carpenter and a king. You thought I was
was just a brother, but I'm a brother and a deliverer. You thought I was just Mary's son, but I'm a son and a savior. I am human and holy. And you don't get to decide who I am. You don't get to limit who I am. I am that mm -hmm. I am. You don't get to decide when I enter the world and you don't get to decide when I leave. I got some more work to do. I'm not finished yet. I have some more to say. And I need your human help with my holy mission. Come on, help me with my whistle here. In just a few more minutes, you're gonna need to hear me when I declare I am finished. You're gonna need to hear so that you know for sure no one took my life, that I gave it up when I got through. So help me with my whistle. And there's some of you here today you need to know that it is okay to be human and holy. It is okay to be analytical and creative, great and a mess. It is okay to be endearing and annoying, smart and silly, dedicated and ambivalent and empath and cutting folks off. It is okay to be a helper who needs some help sometimes. There are some listening today who needs to be assured that you can have human weakness and holy strength. You can have human timidity and holy Boldness. You can have apathy and faith, depression and hope, sadness and joy, passion and peace. There's someone here today, they tried to shame you for being Clark Kent, but they didn't know you were Superman. They didn't know. They tried to shame you for being Bruce Banner. They didn't think you was about nothing. They didn't understand that the Incredible Hulk lives inside you. They thought you was just some girl, but they did not know Diana Prince, that wonder woman woman was inside you. They looked at you and all they saw was a shoe shine boy. They didn't know you were underdog. They didn't know you're human and holy. They don't get to decide our I am. They don't get to limit our I am. Our I am is that I am. And we are created in God's image. A workmanship that need not be ashamed. We're a child of God, a holy temple, a new creation. More than conquerors, the light of this world, crowned with glory and honor, justified by faith, redeemed by the blood, saved by grace. Tell somebody I am human and holy and I declare with my holy boldness, I am thirsty. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. God. Don, girl. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Hallelujah. Ooh. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Renita. I am thirsty. As she mentioned, the next word is, it is finished. 